Shalom and welcome to our 24th annual Feast of Weeks. This is part 90 of Preparing for Rulership. What is the reward of love? Death. What is the solution? Spiritual mind of Yahweh. Those who are spiritually minded will not join the army of a man and go die at the will of a man. He simply will not. There are men on the earth dying for a flag. And you ask him to live for God, he won't do that. Live for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. But he'll die for a flag. I mean, it's a piece of a flag. People all over earth are dying for a flag. Their loyalty and allegiance is to a flag. And they brainwash you from a child. I pledge allegiance to a flag. And then other people on the earth will die for a piece of ground and call it my country. You're not dying for a flag and a country. Those who think that are brainwashed. You are dying at the behest of some lustful character. that's ruling over your life, who are carnally minded. Right or wrong? What's the solution? Come to Yahweh and be spiritually minded, spiritual. Your problem is your spiritual. You need to be spiritual. <laughs> verse 2, James chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ah! What a quagmire, quagmire to be in. Quagmire, huh? Quagmire. What a bunch of mud to be in. <laughs> Without Yahweh, you love and have not. You have overwhelming desire, overwhelming craving, overwhelming. You have not. After you get it all, this stuff you thought you wanted, you have none. You have this overwhelming desire for drugs, you get the drugs, but you're not satisfied. If you were satisfied, you would have to go back to get some more. Why do you keep going back and getting more? Because you can't be satisfied in the carnal mind. That's the way of the flesh. The flesh cannot be satisfied permanently. All satisfaction of the flesh is temporary. You drink water, I don't care how good it tastes. Give me some. <laughs> now why am I getting ready to demonstrate this? See, I just had a glass. But my flesh is what? Calling for some more.
Perhaps some of you are thirsty now. Maybe you've got to for a little water. You may love the sun, but you have not. You better not come and try to take my water you have my water. See, Yahweh is so good, he gives you water. A lustful country will see the water coming from the mountain and know that the river travels through that country and on the way to yours, and they'll tell you, you owe us tribute. <laughs> the country downriver, you owe us tribute. The country downriver says, I'm not owe you nothing. So you block up all the water. <laughs> Make a dam. So now the people down in the country have to come and buy water. What's going to eventually happen? You know, keep you keep charging more money, more silver, more gold, and less water. What's eventually going to happen? You got a war. So the people down the river say the water comes from Yahweh. It doesn't come from you. You don't have any right to try to cut the water off from Yahweh. He made a river to flow down through our land too. What a lesson is this tonight? You love and you have none. You even kill. Why? Because you desire to have. And you're unable to attain, so you're going to snap somebody's gold chain off. Chain be worth $5,000, you go to Hawkins, Hawkins, you're the nearest gold dealer. A little pawn house for $95. Desire to have something to satisfy the flesh. Don't understand the value. Will even kill because of your desire to have. Some men will kill another man in his desire to have a woman. And all the women Yahweh made, his mind get hung up right there. You know where his mind gets hung up, brother? Right there. <laughs> now he's ready to kill. He, he, it's just like Yahweh didn't make another one. <laughs> oh, have mercy, Yahweh. <laughs> Nobody smiles like she smiles. Nobody whispers nice things to me like she does. You messing with my stuff, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Another man look at the woman and says, I know she has a husband, but I'm gonna kill him so I can have you. Is this going on in the world? And a design. Okay. And the book says, and yet you obtain it now. Even if you get this object, it's temporary. It's only temporary. I don't know about you, but I choose life everlasting. I just choose life everlasting. And to do that, you have to be spiritual minded and not carnal. You fight and you war 
and yet you have not. These white folks fought World War I. They fought in the days of the Roman Empire. Yes, sir. History shows, yes, they had not. They conquered the then known world. What happened? Rome in all her glory, where is she? Babylon in all her glory, where is she? Egypt in all her glory, where is she? Medes, the Medes and Persia, where is Persia today? What happened? Germany, what happened? European power, World War II, America in all her glory. Why is she number 19 today? She used to be number one, now she's number 19. Why? I remember when they didn't allow me on Biscayne Boulevard, but now I bought on it. I bought a hotel on it. I haven't demonstrated. Huh? My people believe in marching and demonstrating. I believe in buying and conquering. <laughs> How am I able to accomplish this? Because I am spiritual. Those who are spiritual can't do that. But we that are spiritual are doing that. Those that are carnal-minded are spiritual. Those that are spiritual-minded are spiritual. And those two words are in your dictionary. And they are different. One carries life, one carries death. My creation of these businesses and hotels and buses and trucks and all across America is, is not my luck. Because if it were my luck, I'd be getting this for me. But my name is not on any of these stores or any property. Because I don't have a need for that. All the wealth that I accumulate I give it to you, my children. My sons and daughters become rich. And to prove my love for you, my children, I cause you to get the best for them. And as the word goes around and time gets more hard, people are gonna discover Yahweh. What a blessing. People fight in war and have not because you ask not. What is it they don't ask? They ask not of Yahweh. Now we see the reason. Verse 3 says, You ask and receive not. Why? Because you ask how? A myth. Look up a myth. Let's don't take any chances. You ask a myth. In other words, you don't want it to bless somebody. You only want it to satisfy your love. All right, a myth. A myth. How the proper order is. In an improper order, such a Good, good. Start again. You ask for something and you receive it not because your mind is out of order. Your mind is carnal, is carnal 
So it's out of order. It's out of the order of Yahweh, the way he created your mind to be. That's what a myth means. And to prove that your mind is not in the proper order, what you get, you consume it upon your lust. Your wicked desires. Think about that. That's why you have wars. That's why there are wars on the earth. That's why there's fighting. That's why you fight within yourself. You that have problems, I, I, I won't say that way. I, I won't do right. Uh, but it's so hard to see somebody else uh, eating corn and eating some government cheese and uh, have no government cheese. Uh, it's hard to see somebody eat that government cheese. You know what I mean? It doesn't do you any good. You don't want the cheese for everybody else. <laughs> you don't want the cheese for the anthill. You don't want the cheese for the family. You want the cheese for yourself. You want to consume it all up for your own desire. So you go get it and you stash it. And you hide it and the rats get it. Rats come and steal it from you. Rats come together and come pack it all away. You try to hide back ice meal and canned carnation milk. Y'all ain't seen a rat to get it, and they get together and cart it off. Because your mind is out of order. Instead of Acts 244, instead of Acts 432 and 34, Instead of going by the law that nothing is mine but it belongs to everybody, then you switch and say, that's mine. So you always send rats to get it. <laughs> Glory, I thank Yahweh for the rats. <laughs> that's what you deserve. And then come to class and all the room. <laughs> That's where they stop, right there. They don't say the other part. One for all. All I get is for all of my brothers and sisters. But that's the vow we took. Uh-huh. So when you pretend that you won for all, and then hide stuff back from everybody, huh? Yahweh says a rat after. You don't want to go say nothing to nobody. <laughs> the fact is gone. You can't go to nobody because you're not supposed to have the fact. See, rats like peanuts too. The rats come get your peanuts. <laughs> you just as well laugh. They only looking serious. Go on and laugh. See, you call the war when you hide stuff back. <laughs> call jealousy. People go, it's so hard, it's hard. See, people got a big old back and you don't have one.
nations were jealous of us. In Jerusalem, we had temples of gold, and silver, and wreckage to the glory and honor of Yahweh. And other heathens round about us saw that well. Say, shoot, man. All we got to do is go cock a -doo. We have all that wealth out there. So I come with the message of one for all. See, I'm for all who want to be moral. And my message will get rid of immorality. So then we'll all have what? Peace. So if you join the if you join the group of trying to get a stash, you setting up for a war against yourself. And then Yahweh has mercy on you by sending a rat in to get some of it. <laughs> to give you a warning. War, war is next. <laughs> fighting, fighting, fighting is next. So how many want peace? Well, don't build up no more taxes. Let all of us eat in common together. How many would rather not have rats in your house? Yeah, praise God. You create thievery. Tell people to steal. Why should you have? I don't have. See, that's in here. We just went there. You kill the desire to have. Cannot obtain. You fight and won, yet you have not. I wouldn't want to be sleeping at night and think somebody coming in, rats coming in for my cheese. <laughs> they might want more than cheese one day. You might begin to look like cheese. That's bad, isn't it? Yeah. Now I'm really getting ready. You ask, you receive, not because you ask a myth out of order, but your mind out of order. Why? So you may consume. For what? Purpose. Of all your own love. Now is this word the truth or not? Is this scripture helping anybody tonight? All right, now we're getting ready to step on some toes. <laughs> getting ready, that's a joke. I've been on your toes, on your feet. <laughs> this truth has been walking on your body. <laughs> Verse four, read. Ye adulterers and adulteresses. Now that covers both of them. Who is the adulterer? Man. Who is the adulteress? Wonder why would Yahweh talk about them? Adulteresses. Huh? Take two. But I know women don't have such a desire as that. Right? Women do not have adulterous men. Right? I know that some sisters won't look at me now. <laughs> I heard a strange silence. Women don't have adulterous minds, right? No way in the world a woman is married and have a desire for another man. No other man looks good to her.
I, I know better than ask you, brother. That's why y'all would let y'all have plenty of wives up front. <laughs> y'all would let you have more than one wife up front because he knows good and well how you think. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Yahweh. It's real fun tonight, isn't it? You adulterers. <laughs> and you adulteresses. <laughs> Adulteresses. <laughs> know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with y'all? Now, all of a sudden, the scripture shifts gears. What was the gear shifted to here? Friendship of the world is enmity with Yahweh is a shift of gears. What's that shift? Say it loud. It shifts from the carnal mind, which is what everybody was laughing about. See, everybody saw adultery from the carnal mind, so that's what you were laughing at. Because you can understand that, so you were in a carnal state. But the scripture right here shifted that adultery is really what? Friendship with the world. Then who are you committing adultery against, brother and sister? It's all both of you the same. Against Now you're not back, you're not into a physical thing. You're into a mental, spiritual minded thing. Why is the physical you? To give you what? Give you understanding, give you an illustration. See, I go with something in the word that you can understand. To help you understand that which you would not understand in the carnal mind. So I gave you a carnal illustration scripturally so as to be able to attract your mind to the spiritual side. So you who seek to be friends with the world are in serious trouble. Well, how do you be friends with the world? You know what the world is doing. Hmm? The world is immoral. So if you be friends with immorality, then you are courting death. Why? Because the penalty of adultery in Yahweh's law is what? Death. death. So if the carnal is the physical side, if you can understand that to commit physical adultery in the law of Yahweh is physical death, then to be a friend to the world is also spiritual death which leads you into physical death. So you'd be dead twice. So you can walk around on two feet and yet be dead. And if you don't change, seek to be a friend to the world, you're going to run. But if you be spiritual minded, you'll give up a dump. Hmm? And when you give up a dump, you'll have life. And how long is this life you're going to have if you be spiritual minded of Yahweh? Everlasting life. Now you said you want to live everlasting? I'm giving you a clear picture of how to save your soul, not emotionally, logically, rationally, intellectually, mentally, physically, all of that things they This concludes part 90 of preparing.